Hello and welcome back to Dial H for Hero Clicks. I'm your sexy ranch hand co-host Calder Ness. This episode we're going to discuss the first two days of Scott Porter's unboxing. We're going to answer some listener questions and we're going to do a little uh, a little community Tuesdays for everybody. This is episode 390. Howdy howdy, let's get rowdy. So if you're looking for emotional satisfaction, my advice to you is seek professional hero clicks. No. Are you serious? Again? How many people even play this game? Like a hundred? Instant deadpan humor. Oh, okay. okay. six yeah. people think I am funny. It's a hard day's work. Not that you know anything about that. Which absolute fools? It's not Witcher nonsense. I'm gonna make hero clicks like that forever. Are you kidding me? Hey, Google, back some more. Let's attack him because he's a jerk. Wow, wow, wow. Dial H for Hero Clicks is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com, where you can find cool stuff in stock every day, including all of the latest Hero Clicks singles and sealed products. Make sure you check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Yeah, Jack had to take a break this week. He wasn't feeling too well, so we just we sent him home. You know, hope he rests up uh, and takes it easy. Uh, but joining me, like always, in the studio is your Dial H for Hero Clicks champion, my co-host, Simeon Bruce. What's going on? Oh, yeah. And I'm ready for feastening round two because I already got one out of the way. So time to empty that belly and fill it up again. Oh, nice. Yeah, nice. just picture I, that. Picture it. I, I'm picturing full Vereen. Yes. When, I think of you, <laughs> when you eat a bunch. I actually if, had, to, uh, I had to move full Vereen. Uh, oh, I was really? rearranging the basement. So, yeah, full Vereen oh. had to get moved. Oh, but no. I, I, it is very uh, apropos of this time of year, full Vereen. This is where we are like, hey, guys, uh, check our uh, I guarantee on Thanksgiving Day, we'll we'll post a picture of a full Vereen there uh, on Facebook and Twitter just so they, they can all everyone can properly visualize tattooed on my. Uh, oh, I don't I could get full Vereen <laughs> tramp stamped on me. How about no, that? don't, don't, be don't. $500 don't do Patreon that. goal if we get up to $500. Oh, no. oh, it's so bad. It's so <laughs> bad. Uh. All right. Uh. Simeon, what made you happy this week, my man? Getting get nice and full, full yes, up. Yes, so it, it did. Uh, uh, I cooked my first like real big boy meal. Um, I I really like to cook. I normally just kind of wing it, uh, but I went full on recipes. So I did a, a green bean casserole with French onions and some panko breadcrumbs and all that that jazz. Uh, forgot to eat any of it. Uh, but then I, oh. I made some mashed potatoes. I made them slightly different than I normally do. I was trying some an interesting new recipe. I think I prefer baked mac mashed potatoes. Like you mash them and then bake them so they get like that little crust. I think that's oh, what I'm going to do okay. next time. But uh, then I made a baked mac and cheese dish, which, I mean, it was like macaroni that's good. and cheese. So, yeah, yeah you can't go wrong with uh, <laughs> melted cheese and noodles. Uh, then I, I made a ham except it turned out it wasn't a ham it was just like a pork butt roast which mm. is fine it still tastes like ham and then uh, i made some jambalaya and uh i also made rolls but upon finishing the rolls in order to cuz i was making other stuff at the same time i put the rolls in the broiler to keep them warm and then i completely forgot about them so they were still there. They weren't burnt, but they were like still there this morning. And I was like, ah, I never even had a roll. So it was kind of kind of Ooh. sad. I, I forgot to eat green bean casserole and a roll. But yeah, it was it was fun. Uh, I like cooking. I don't really like cooking to this extent. I found out like I'm not I'm kind of like a single dish kind of person. Um, multiple dishes kind of just make me I don't know. It's a lot. It's a lot. You you want to make one thing well. Yeah. You don't want to have to try to. Yeah, no, I get it. I get it. Trying to like be all over the kitchen, seeing where everything's at, cooking right. a million things at once. That's not as fun as just like yeah, if cooking I was one, of those, one thing. If I was like a Ramsey household or whatever, where I had like five ovens I could utilize, it might be different. But uh, limited yeah. counter space and oven space is it's a little hectic. No. That's fair. That's fair. Uh, well, sweet, man. I love it. Uh, what made me happy this week? We did a tournament in Sioux Falls, our second Master Mold tournament. It was sealed. It was supposed to be Rise and Fall, and then we got there, 
uh, while I got there. And if you've seen the YouTube video, you know that it actually ended up being Joker's Wild. I personally liked that way more. I'm just burnt out on Rise and Fall. You know, you guys know I don't really care for the X-Men that much. And I've played in like three Rise and Fall sealed tournaments. And it's really not that fun of a sealed set. I know a lot of people in our Discord and a lot of other people online have been saying they've been having fun with Rise and Fall. And that's great. Uh, but if you don't like the character selection, it's really hard to like enjoy uh, the set. Especially if it doesn't seem like there's much going on. Um, but Joker's Wild, on the other hand, that was really fun to play a set that... Uh, was made, uh, you know, pre rules change, pre two actually rule both changes. rules, yeah, changes. yeah, the 2017 and yeah. <laughs> so it was crazy uh, to play it and you know see how everything worked. Uh, I would have only had one character that could ignore pushing damage on my team uh, prior to this year, so that was really cool. Uh, I didn't play the best with it. I definitely could have played a lot better and definitely could have done better. But I, I heavily enjoyed playing it. I pulled the. Uh, Super rare Mr. Freeze. I pulled uh, Katana. I'd advise you not to be a kill buyer or whatever. Her soul, sword, takes the, the souls of the, the whatever. Uh, suicide Wait, Squad ha -ha reference? Bit. Yeah, Suicide Squad okay. reference. <laughs> just Suicide Squad reference. Not oh, not, that's suicide not even squad. the sequel. The Suicide Squad. No, it's, squad. it's just Suicide Squad reference. Yeah, crazy. Um, uh, the amount of times I probably went like, Oh, Batman, you do the Ice Age or like whatever <laughs> when I was playing like Mr. Freeze. Uh, you know, I really wish I would have made. Uh, we so we only had 12 people show up, which sucked. Time um, to chill so, out, chill out, give me the cold shoulder, <laughs> whatever, you know. Um, so bad. Uh, <laughs> I almost wanted to say one of Arnold's uh famous lines from Pumping Iron, but I, I won't say that on this podcast. <laughs> Uh, yes. But I was right there. I was about to mean those. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, anyways, uh, no, I missed top four out of 12 people by 80 points, which Dang. really sucked. And I was like, man, that's rough. Uh, but that's okay because it was a lot of fun. Uh, so it was just like a really good fun tournament. And as you guys saw, I wish I would have took more videos during those tournaments. But like the the opening section is really funny. And then like the last half is just me being like, hey, I forgot to take videos of the rest of the tournament. This is what happened, blah, blah, blah. Uh, but it was still really fun. And I, I heavily enjoyed that. So that's definitely what made me happy this week. Yeah, I think Joker's Wild really puts the wild in uh, those older hero clicks. <laughs> so yeah, no, yeah. Uh, that does Girl, sound like wild. way more fun than X-Men Rise and Fall. Just speaking as someone who's also played quite a bit of like sealed and just played. It's nice to. It, well, it's not really, I'm not going to say nice. It's very refreshing to play sealed of old sets. It's like, ha, this is what we used to play with? Wild. Absolutely wild. Oh, gosh. The, the amount of times there was like a uh, Joker's like wild like joke that was made where it's like, oh, man, Joker rolled really well. I'm like, well, after all, the Joker's wild. And yeah, gosh, that was <laughs> that was painful. What game uh, is Joker wild? What? Is that uh, spades? No, spades. Uh, Joker's not used in poker. I know that. Go uh, fish. He's not. He's not used in uh, King's Corners or pitch. <laughs> I know. Uh, no, wait, Joker is used in pitch, but I don't know if he's necessarily wild. Uh, Crazy Eights is he wild? Like a wild card in Crazy Eights? Maybe is that possibly? Are we sounding real stupid right now? Yeah, um, I don't maybe. play <laughs> probably on a card game. Most <laughs> it's crazy because most uh, card games they're like remove the Jokers. Yeah, take those bad boys out of the deck. You don't need them. Um, but yeah, that's what made happen this week. So we can just go ahead and jump into the news, which is the Scott Porter unboxings. Uh, Simeon, bit of a weird unboxing schedule this week with a, a Thursday, Friday a unboxing bit, yeah. and then break for the weekend. <laughs> trying to get, I think they're trying to get them in before... Uh, Thanksgiving Day, I guess. They right. didn't want to do them like Thanksgiving week because that would run on Thanksgiving. So the at the current rate, they should be done Wednesday, the day before Thanksgiving. Um, but yeah, they don't want to compete against the uh, Macy's Day Parade. They know they can't. <laughs> no, beat yeah, it, you know, they really lose a lot of views for those those people that, that are taking their, their, their uh, what Macy's Day Thanksgiving football stuff. Oh, that I don't yeah. know what people watch on Thanksgiving. Right. 
but it won't be unboxings because yeah we're we're two out of five into it and uh we've gotten some interesting stuff yeah uh it's cool man it's really cool this set is it's got me excited it's got me uh a little uh yeah, a little, a little excited, I'd say. A little yeah. excited. So I will say I'm it's been a bit of a roller coaster because when they previewed like some of the sculpts with no information, it was like a peak, and then we got the huge dump of the leaked uh, chases, and it kind of went downhill for me. And then we started getting some of this unboxing stuff, and I'm like, all right, like we're starting to climb back up. So. For me personally, like this, this has redeemed the set a little bit. I'm still not as like pumped as I was when I first saw the sculpts because I, I truly, the sculpts are just like knocking it out of the park and the dials are. are not keeping up. But, uh, no, it's, it's looking like it's going to be a real fun set. You know, I'll have to say probably the coolest stuff, like the chases aren't so much the draw anymore in this set. I think the super rares. 100 yeah. percent are though super even some of the rares really cool yeah, yeah even some, some of the rares are really a sweet. few of them like deadpool for sure uh the x-men super scroll is just a really good sculpt for a rare uh but yeah the the super rares definitely have the most flavor on dial i mean yeah comparatively uh some of the chases are more than adequate but uh the super rares definitely have knocked it out of the park um yeah, so speaking of neither of those, I'm going to I'm going to talk about a common real quick. Oh, beautiful. That's what I like <laughs> so, to see. Yeah, this is it. a number 15 in the set, Anome. Uh she's got the Fantastic 4 Scientist and Wakanda keywords. So there's plenty to play around with. I think Fantastic 4 and Scientist are both pretty decent. Wakanda hasn't gotten as much love in the last couple sets, but we do have plenty of uh stuff to pull from all the way back to Avengers Defenders War, when the keyword was first born, when the tiny nation of Wakanda was first discovered in Avengers Defenders War. Uh, so she's got five range, one lightning bolt. She's 40 points, starts off with sidestep. Not really, she's just like a support piece off the bat. Uh, she's a nine for two, most of her dial. And then for some reason, on click three, you become a running shot 10 for three. No defense powers or attack powers to speak of. She does get running shot for clicks three and four and then back to sidestep with an eight for one on click five. Fantastic four team ability and then the captain and sidekick tag, which is, Ooh. I think that's the first one that's been a captain Double and up. sidekick. Maybe maybe one of like the kids also had it, but uh, her really interesting thing is she's got a single trait that is, I optimized your equipment. Hope you don't mind. So she's got a little wrench. It's actually not a little wrench. That is a massive wrench. Pretty it's big, quite large. Her arm. It's like they clipped a a Lego figure's wrench, <laughs> and just placed it on a hero like sculpt. It's huge. She, they couldn't give her like some sort of like sci-fi tool. No, she she uses wrenches. The scientist. Oh, uses she's like wrenches. a what is it? Is it gadget from the? Chip and Dale show where she just has like a big old wrench. Yeah. Is that her name? Gadget? Yeah. Just like... <laughs> That's where that 10 for 3 comes in. She's going <laughs> to. That's right. Absolutely. Clocks you with it. Yeah. Smash someone with that huge wrench. Um, okay. So <laughs> the trade is friendly sidekicks using outwit, perplex, or probability control may use it a second time each turn. So one of the coolest parts right off the bat is it doesn't say other friendly sidekicks or anything like that. So since she is friendly and a sidekick, she gets to use outwit twice per turn. Nice. Uh, other characters that this is really good with is the 25 point Franklin who has prob on dial. So he'd be able to use it twice. Uh, Leech who has outwit and can be combined with Artie to have like a 10 range outwit could use it twice per turn. Uh, I don't know which one would have perplex, but I'm sure that there is one with perplex. Uh, and then of course, since she's also a sidekick, she gets all the random benefits that they can have. So she can get the, right. uh, the super senses from Spider-Man, the shape change from awesome Andy, all those kinds of things. She can mastermind to Jim Hammond, that kind of stuff. Uh, but yeah, just a really solid figure for 40 points. Um, it's definitely going to be, if you're like building with, sidekicks 
it's an option. I don't know if it's worth it for your team, but it is an option that you can have. And it's one of the higher pointed sidekicks that we've had because it has that dual role. Right. No, I like her a lot. I think uh, Valeria is the one with Perplex. Oh, like yes. 20 or 15 points or whatever. So you got, yeah, boom, yeah. you got like a double Perplex right there for 20 points or whatever she is, which is pretty solid. Uh, I mean, I guess that makes it a 60 point, but still like she herself... You know, when you first look at that dial and you see like 40 points, you're like, ah, are you sure about that? You're like, you know, double outwit. Uh, and then just letting everyone else do that. I think that is just a really solid figure. And I, I dig it. So if you do like sidekick swarm, I don't know how popular sidekick swarm is like casually. If people actually like play I've swarm seen it, and sidekicks uh, a lot. I think twice in the last month I've played against sidekick swarm. Okay. Not like optimized, just like, you know, just just all of the fun. yeah, all of the future foundation kid stuff. Children. Uh, yeah, all right. Children. Well, that's pretty cool then. Uh, nice. What I'm going to talk about here is I'm going to talk about another common. We're going to test uh, just because another forty point common. Or wait, is she an uncommon? Nah, she's a common. Yeah, we're talking about She Hulk, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, it was really funny in Scott Porter's video. He, uh, he talked like a lot about like what he thought like She Hulk and like how crazy and cool her story was and everything else. And then he was like, "Ah, I see the, the dial's a little different here," or like whatever. I just thought it was funny. Uh, his like live reaction to you know, as a comic book fan, you want every character to be this crazy in depth comic accurate Flavorful, thing. Yeah, but like Wiz Kids can't make every single figure in the set, especially named characters like She Hulk. You know, the thing whoever, you know, Beast and stuff. They can't make them these crazy title characters for every single person, you know? So they kind of kind of be simplified. Uh, but Jennifer Walters here, uh, first of all, boy, is she thick. And some of you might actually have to bleep. <laughs> Dang, boy, is she thick. Already making too much work. Sorry about that. She's Monster Warrior Brute Cosmic uh, and, of course, Avengers. I don't know why I said that in that strange order. Uh, she's 40 points. 40 points. Uh, she's 10 speed charge, top two clicks, 11 attack, her whole dial with nothing, 18 impervious, top two clicks, three damage with a uh, close combat expert on the top two clicks. And then she is sidestep with nine speed on her last two, 17 with invulnerability on her last two, and four damage with exploit on her last two clicks. Or uh, right away, 12 for five, she picks up a light object uh, oh, yeah. with a five square reach. You know, and then she she does have a trait, which is Kotai Corruption, which is these little plant creatures, which are apparently the main big bads of Empire. I haven't read Empire. It's on the list. I'll definitely try to read the Captain America Empire story for sure. Yeah. Um, but when she Hulk is targeted by the, mind control, the Avengers didn't contact Matt Reed. He could have taken care of that plant problem. That's right. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> Cutting him down. <laughs> I, I need that that Matt Reed uh, cameo in Avengers where he's got like a weed whacker, a lawnmower, and then it's just it's just what, uh, there's Sequoia some really campy uh, shaking like in his boots. bad horror movie where the dude straps like a lawnmower to his chest and walks through a house of like zombies. is that not a uh, house of a thousand corpses? It very well could be, uh, okay. but yeah, that's what, that's immediately what I pictured. Yeah, that would be hilarious. Except Matt's so big, it, he'd have to like strap one it would of the be, zero turn be a radius riding, ones riding, with like oh the, yeah, the sixteen inch like triple blades, and he just, just walks like town. normal because he's able to. Yeah, just shreds them. Yeah. All right. Uh, Anyhow, <laughs> and so her trait gives her negative two defense when mod when targeted by mind control. Uh for friendly mind control that's out there. That's kind of cool. Uh, for opposing mind control, there's not that much mind control that goes around, honestly. But the idea that it's really easy for a 12 for 4 to be smacking you uh, is not super fun. So yeah. placement with her is something you've got to very much be aware of, of yeah. what your opponents have, uh, etc. But I think she's just a really fun... Like, So this is a figure I would want to run a swarm of. 40 point She-Hulk, just charge impervious 12 for 4 combat expert i think that's hilarious this is also an awesome uh like sealed pick or like a battle royal like the last thing that you get oh, stuck yeah. with the both of those are i mean it's not a huge point investment for sealed um but yeah the one if for whatever reason your opponent is running mind control and you get to click three or four 
and then she's a 15 defense against that mind control, and she smacks you with four pen damage. Dang. It's going to hurt. It's going to hurt. Yeah. Uh, see me in your second pick, my man. Yeah, so, man, I, I do want to shout out Golden Oldie. It's a fun dial. It's Aunt May as a cosmic, I don't know, uh, galactic. Is it Harold? Yes, Galactus, Harold. Yeah. That's, yeah. Um, it only gets interesting on its like last click, and your opponent's not going to send you there. But it is, it's a 45-point taxi with prob, so there's that. Uh, but instead, I'm going to talk about the rare number 038 in the set. For 35 points, it's Kitty Pride. Uh, so 35 points, you'll have to keep that in mind as I talk about the dial, because that's pretty much the only thing that's redeemable about this figure, is that it's real cheap. So it's got the shield and X-Men team abilities, which... For 35 points, already off to a good start. The Excalibur, Martial Artist, Shield, Spy, and X-Men keywords. Uh, and we've got one trait that is, did you forget about my phasing power? How could we? It's literally all you ever do. Uh, so <laughs> when Kitty Pride uses phasing teleport until your next turn, she takes a maximum of one damage from attacks. So for 35 points, she's five clicks long. And if you phase, she takes a max of one damage from attacks, which is pretty big like that's that's a really solid reducer um i'll get into her dial real quick but before uh, she's also got one additional thing with her phasing and that's her special speed power electrical field disruption phasing teleport when kitty pride uses it after resolutions give an action token to each opposing character with the armor robot or vehicle keyword that she moved through during the action so not likely that it's going to pop off but I mean, there is a chance if you're doing X-Men versus, like, Sentinels or something kind of build. Uh, yeah. But, yeah, it's it's an additional little flavor. I think the main thing is that trait where she's taking a max of one damage. Now, her dial is a full dial. So it's five clicks, full dial of that speed power that I just mentioned. Starts with uh, ten speed. She's got ten attack, blades the whole dial. Uh, 18 defense top dial with combat reflexes. And so the values go down a little bit. Click two, she gets a 17 combat reflexes, still a 10 attack with blades, two damage for the first three clicks with no damage power. On clicks three and four, she gets super senses instead of combat reflexes with 18 on both of those. And then her last two clicks, four and five, she drops down to a nine attack with blades and a 17 combat reflexes on click five. It's a very okay dial. I wouldn't look at it twice if it wasn't for the fact that she's 35 points and can position and also, so you can phase up, you can position into like somewhere that you want to be like preferably right next to somebody because she's got combat reflexes. And then once you're there, you take a max of one damage until you get to do something the next turn. So if they can't break away, if you're just locking someone down, you've got a good chance that you're going to be able to hit that Blades, Claws, Fangs attack. Uh, not necessarily hit, but you'll be able to make it. Um, and then for 35 points, it's just it's kind of a headache to deal with. Uh, does your opponent wait until you have two action tokens and you can't phase, and then they can actually deal damage? Do they? Because you can't outwit that trait. You could outwit phasing teleport. Um but yeah. yeah, essentially, your opponent has to work quite hard for 35 points, and it's you know it's tying up ranged pieces. It's it's doing quite a bit for that little investment. I actually really like this piece for just being a rare. Um, it's not going to pull a ton of weight offensively, but you know if you're in sealed and you have like a shield or X-Men team that you can build. This is a great addition to that. If you just have leftover points, there's no reason not to play this piece in sealed. It's just, again, it's, you know, even with flurry, your opponent's going to at most put you on click three. Uh, yeah. If she's phased, like, you know, and then you've got super senses. So you're potentially mm -hmm. rolling out. Yeah. I think the only weakness of this piece is if, you can't phase which or like, right so when she does attack suddenly you know you can take full damage which is a bummer but again she's got solid defense values she's she's kind of stout oh yeah and i mean it would be nice to have stealth but i think that would tip her over to being 35 points you know yeah. 
like and even then she's still you know kind of first few treat gosh that'd be really good for her. really good i mean she is shield right so it makes yeah. sense yeah. um uh, I mean, 10 for two blades, locking someone down, you know, if you don't want to phase again, you know, still like solid, like so for 35 points, uh, it, this would be a bit of a bummer for this to be a rare when you maybe want to pull like a Colossus or somebody who can be like a, a heavier hitter on your team in sealed. But I still think really solid. Like if you pull some good commons and uncommons, you know, like Captain Marvel, whatever else, uh, Beldan, you know, solid running shot pieces and stuff. Uh, this for your rare is super solid. Just like to fill out and hit someone real. Nah, it's not really hitting anybody really hard, but uh, a, a nice little finesse piece that that can be you know put on your team pretty easily. There, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and talk about Wolverine here. Uh, he's the Shield Wolverine that Scott showed off. So he's uh, got the Shield Team ability. He's got zero range, two targets, uh, 50 points, Shield Spy X Men. Six clicks of life, uh, first three charge, last three flurry, full dial of blades, uh, eight, you know, uh, toughness for the first three, combat reflexes for the last three, exploit for the first three, and then empower for the last three. Has four clicks of 12 attack, and then the last two clicks are 11s. Start strong with some 18s, full dial of three damage. Uh, so he's going to be moving about four squares right away, and then hitting you with a uh, 12 three damage exploit blades which is solid i i really like the 12 attack on this wolverine it's really cool and like this is already a way better dial than the 50 point like wolverines and stuff that we got in rise and fall and we haven't <laughs> even talked about his three traits that he has the three wolverines traits from this guy rise and fall i mean in a 1v1 uh the similar point costed ones this one's yeah yeah he's taking it he's taking it home so I'm not going to mention the target and everything yet. I'm going to first do this other trait where it's whenever Wolverine hits, after resolutions, you may use regeneration as free. That is Dang. awesome with his flurry down yeah. dial. He is going to be hard to take out, man. That's insane. Ah, oh, I love it. Okay, so <laughs> Wolverine, whenever he hits, use regen as free. Just keep that in mind. That's just crazy cool. Uh, his first trait is tracking the target at the beginning of the game choose an opposing character as wolverine's mark whenever that character moves oh hi mark uh dang, that's funny it's so funny to me uh after resolutions you may move wolverine up to two squares so whenever that character moves at all you move wolverine two squares that's cool second part of the trait if wolverine's mark is ko'd choose a different opposing character to be a new mark so that's awesome uh so he's always going to have a mark somewhere on the map and then his second trait is silently stalking. Wolverine can't be targeted until he has made an attack this game or is adjacent to his mark. Uh, hi, Mac. Uh, so that's the last time I'll do that because it won't be funny anymore. Uh, he can't he just can't be targeted. Anything yeah. outwit with an attack with prob with whatever on the until surface. He, until uh, he has made an attack or is adjacent to the mark. Yeah. You, cool. Like, so without getting into the additional part yet, um, yeah. on the surface, if you pick like your opponent's range piece and they want to be able to attack this Wolverine, they will have to now move, you know, let's say they've got somebody with like 10 range or something. They're going to have to move them adjacent to this Wolverine or wait for you to attack. That alone is like pretty good. You can kind of strategize which character you pick because they're going to have to. Like clearly you're not going to be like, oh, they've got spider ham. I'll pick that. Like, that's a bad pick. Uh, but, you know, if they've got, like, a support piece that you want them to have to tie up with this Wolverine or, you know, whatever, uh, unless they just want to try and ignore this guy, which, as Calder said, 12 attack, it's going to be kind of hard to ignore. Yeah. yeah, I mean, there's all sorts of stuff you can do uh, without getting into, like, what's the said. There's kind of some weird stuff you can do with this Wolverine. But just normally, if you want to maybe equip him with, like, uh, remake a ring or something to give him poison uh, and he never has to make an attack and just don't let him like don't let the mark base him basically and you can just be be poisoning fools to your heart's content which is kind of cool so like there's one option you can do for this Wolverine uh, then there was some shenanigans people mentioned uh, with swap and at the beginning of the game where if you swap Wolverine in you don't have to choose a mark so his trait his second trait would still be in effect uh so he couldn't be targeted at all if he hasn't made an attack and there is no mark for him to be like adjacent to. 
Uh, I'm not going to fully explain it. That's sort of like the gist, basically, uh, with some disgusting X-Men swap and why X-Men and why well, why swap in general is not very fun and just does things like this where it's like, you know, oh, why? What this Wolverine really reminds me of is how glad I am that ID cards are no longer a thing. Because can you imagine oh, yeah. a 50-point piece that you can't target just oh, right? spinning yeah. out ID? Because, you know, power action call in an ID card, they do their attack thing, and then move off the board. Wolverine didn't make an attack. You still can't target him, and the ID character is no longer there, so you still can't target them. It's like, ugh. Gosh. They simply need to change, like, to, to you totally fix made, this trait. What's the, go for the it. first trait? I was just going to yeah, say, just, you back yeah. in the day with ID cards you could have made a almost competitive viable team with five of these Wolverines and then like X jet or something like that. Oh geez. It would have been stupid. Thankfully you could. Uh, oh, thankfully he's unique. unique. Yeah. So. yeah. He's unique. Yeah. For, uh, you know, Wizkids, good job. You made him unique yeah. at the very least. <laughs> like, that's really good. But he's a, he's a really solid Wolverine. And, and yeah, like I think a, a pretty simple fix is whenever Wolverine begins the game instead of making it at the beginning of the game, uh, just to fix any shenanigans like that. And this also retroactively fixes ID cards, even though not really an important thing anymore. Uh, but still, uh, this Wolverine is really cool, really fun. Uh, I like the Shield X Men. I thought it was funny that we both uh, talked about both talked about him, the Kitty Pride Shield, and then uh, old Wolverine, Shieldy X Men boy himself. So. Yeah, it was pretty cool. Uh, if you guys are wondering, yes, there was a really, really cool Captain America that was pulled. I'm not going to talk about it on the podcast because I went live Friday night and talked about it for like 45 minutes. And we talked about things we can do to abuse Avenger Swap, why I don't like Avenger Swap, why this Captain America is cool, why he's not cool. All that stuff uh, is on the YouTube channel. So check that out if you want to know my thoughts and feelings about uh steve rogers uh the super rare here uh it's less than there's more, 10 there's points more per than... click yeah uh, a beautiful uh not even 10 points per click he has yeah. 11 clicks of life and he's yeah so it's whatever that works out to math wise <laughs> something something i ain't you got a phone you got a calculator point don't ask me that's my guess i don't know beautiful guess i mean i love it uh all right we have uh, before we do listener questions, let's go ahead and do uh, Community Tuesdays, because we brought that back. There are dozens of us. Dozens! Oh, hey, you found the audio for it, Simeon. Nice. Good job. I totally forgot that audio existed. Oh, wait. It's just it's there's the dozens of us. Audio, yeah. It's just there's dozens of us. Why? I don't know what I'm talking about. Hey, fellas. So this Community Tuesdays, we asked you guys, what Heroclix figure was your arch rival when you started playing? Competitive or casual answers are both welcome. It's like, what Heroclix figure did you always kind of find yourself, you know, losing to or playing against a lot and just being like, ah, if only I could beat that figure. What, what was it for you, Simeon, in, you know, competitive and or casually? Uh, so I, when I got into competitive, it was Unimind. And it was more so like I just saw so many people <laughs> online building with it that I was like, I want to counter build. It turned out like counter building isn't really the best way to go into a tournament it's actually almost never works when you counter build for a specific figure uh but yeah it was unimind when i first got into competitive because i got in right when that figure dropped and that was the new hotness uh, but as far as just overall uh it was actually just resources so for the longest time uh my one venue it was always lantern batteries uh and I, I didn't own one, didn't care to, like, learn how they worked. So my opponent was honestly just, like, you know, telling me whatever, and I just went along with it, and I was just like, uh-huh. And it was, like, the worst handicap to, like, go against constantly. And uh, it wasn't until, like, much later that I realized I, too, could have simply just figured out how they worked and played one, but I just didn't. But, yeah, yeah not really a great nemesis as far as figures go, but... Yeah, in the land of resources, the the person who doesn't play with one is definitely at a, at a handicap, at a disadvantage, hundred percent. Yeah. Uh, so my like casual nemesis, uh, when I started playing was I think, uh, many people probably know this already, but it was Mary Marvel. Oh, I hated Mary Marvel so much. She's the worst, dude. When you get hypersonic with heavy objects. And she like healed all the way back to full, like pretty much. It, it was she was nasty. I hated playing against Mary Marvel. 
yeah, that just sucked. Um, or competitive, like rival, it, it's got to go to uh, Balls of Fury. Balls of Fury was very annoying to play against. I was counting down the days for him to be retired. Like I hundred percent was like, I'm I'm done. I do not like playing against Balls of Fury. I mean, I had him on one of my teams because in my brick of Nick Fury, I did pull the level seven idea ID with that Balls of Fury, and he was on a few of my clicks teams for a while. Felt dirty, didn't like him, uh, and I don't like Balls of Fury, so uh, I'm very much glad he's rotated and also not Silver Age legal. Um, maybe he's not so bad anymore, but for a while there, he was very annoying to play against. Uh, but yeah, let's do like a uh, top three or something for uh, stuff yeah. here on, so, uh, on questions. Over on Facebook, uh, I'm just going to pick at random. I didn't read through sure. it before, but over here on Facebook, we've got Matthew Gronide said... I play a lot of Batman family, so Ultimate Thor was the bane of my existence back in the days of huge match maps and insane range values. So yeah, Ultimate Thor with the, what was it, the Ultimate's team ability that allowed him to see through mm -hmm. stealth. And then I imagine that is a, a pretty hard counter to Batman family. To be fair, Batman family has like a huge advantage to anyone that doesn't see through hindering, so. Yeah. Uh, Pierre or Pierre, if you're from South Dakota, on uh, on <laughs> Twitter says, "Infinity Challenge Fire Lord, Rookie Destiny, and Con Artist teams were very annoying to face." Uh, I love Romeo's reply here: "Is don't you know that all you need is a thug to beat Fire Lord?" <laughs> uh, beautiful, beautiful callback to, uh, to the Thursday throw. Yeah. Uh, yeah, the yeah the thread, thread that, that we did last week. week. Yeah. yeah, that was hilarious. <laughs> um, but yeah, that was a good one. But yeah, I think, I think a lot of people agree with you, Pierre, about how disgusting Fire Lord is. Oh, I just thought that was hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> we know of at least one person that does not agree, but... Uh... <laughs> That's true. That's true. All right. Uh, James Craddock says, I've had a few. Ben Crawler was a nightmare. Always made shape change. I, I've had that similar experience, I feel. With Ben Crawler, uh, teamed with Professor yeah? X from GSX. You've had that experience, Simeon? Yeah, I, yeah. I think so, maybe. Yeah. Uh, it always let me know that player was not here for a shared experience. I don't know what uh, the Professor X from JSX uh, did. I think he sees through. He draws line of fire through friendly X Men. I think. I think that's what he does. -Men. Okay, so yeah, combined. Okay, yeah. You can usually tell if someone's like stumbled into a good combo or if they're like kind of power playing but yeah i am glad i didn't uh didn't exist in the hero clicks when uh the lamp and like ben crawler kind of stuff was going on would have been a wild time Ooh, yeah uh over on twitter we got hair poofenstaufen uh says <laughs> punisher from ultimate i just love that name real name hilarious. yeah yeah dude it's beautiful yeah absolutely real name 100 percent uh, Punisher from Ultimates. He says, needless to say, I wasn't a very good player back then. But yo, this Punisher, he's no slouch. First of all, he's got this Max Payne like sculpt where he's like doing this jump, like the sideways, whatever jump, you know what I mean? You yeah. know Max Payne. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, the bullet the double time. guns. Yeah. It is pretty cool. I really like that. Uh and you know, he had stealth, willpower. I think he had what range combat expert top dial. I'm trying to find him here. Uh yeah, he was stealth, an eleven for two range combat expert. You know, uh, 15 defense, 8 range, 2 targets. Not Maybe not the greatest uh, defense-wise, but, you know, with that stealth, 8 range, you know, 11 for 4. I think I think that's, you know, pretty legitimate to be like, yeah, he was messing my stuff up. For sure, yeah. All right, and then last over here on Facebook is Tristan Campos, who said, that stupid duo figure of Shazam and Black Adam from the Brave and the Bold oh. and the Thanos prize figure with the gauntlet from way back when. Yeah, that, that duo figure uh, hurt me last year a little bit, too. So I, I, <laughs> yeah, I we did a Thursday throwdown. I cosplayed that duo figure. You did? I was pretty proud of it. It took a lot of editing. Shit, Simeon but... Septum is scolded into my brain now. Not, not fun. <laughs> yeah. Well, when you have to use a pajama shirt from when you were a child for a cosplay, <laughs> you know you're doing something right. So, Right. Uh, yeah, definitely. As much as I want to end it there, uh, I'll go ahead and read. Uh, Mark 1 on 
Twitter says man killer from Nick Fury Agents of Shield. Oh, yeah. Uh that's hilarious. I forgot about man killer. The original uh version of China in Hero Clicks, old man killer here. Yeah, I forgot uh, about that figure. She what did she do? Let's see. Uh oh, yeah, a little bit of super strength, charge, uh invincible action. Uh she gets to choose close combat expert or giants, or she can use range combat expert with a value of five of yeah, that's pretty solid. Yeah, I can see. She mess you up. Uh, target of an attack. Attacking character is a higher attacker damage value than man killer. Uh, that character replaces those higher combat values with her values. Ah, okay. Neat. No man is better than me. All right, man killer. Uh, and then he says, nowadays, uh, Onslaught is his, his arch rival in Hero Clicks. So, it's pretty good. Uh, thank you guys for answering the Community Tuesdays question. It was really fun seeing what uh, everybody's different like era and like what figures were messing them up and everything back then. Uh, and let us know. We haven't done Community Tuesdays in a while, but it's you know it's kind of uh, it was looking to be a slower week this week. Obviously, that ended up not being as true as we thought. Uh, but still, uh, it was pretty fun uh, doing it again. So let us know. You know if you guys are have enjoyed doing Community Tuesdays again and all that stuff. If you want to keep doing it in the future, like we said, when it's a slower week probably pop out a community Tuesday's question. Uh, anyways, Simeon, we got some listener questions to also get to. So let's go ahead and start on discord here. Uh, Bill, his own bill apparently says, do you think WizKids will seize the opportunity for the Disney plus property and give them to really push the starter, uh, putting it in like big stores, like Walmart, target, whatever, and advertising it. Uh, what do you think? I, so this is like a twofold question because so WizKids bread and butter, the person that pushes their product the most is us, the community. And in like inside of that is uh, giving like brick and mortar stores, game shops that give us a place to play the opportunity to sell something exclusively, more exclusively. That's kind of why like they, you haven't seen, you know, you don't see boosters on the shelves occasionally, uh, Target used to get the gravity feeds. I don't know if that kind of thing is going to come back. Um, so it's a fine line that WizKids has to walk where they're not snubbing the communities and uh, the play groups and stuff like that by taking away from the like local game stores. Um, that being said, I'd absolutely love if the Disney Plus starter was put on like Walmart and Target shelves because I think the end result... Like, if it's, you know, if they're just doing the starter, they're not doing, like, the bricks and stuff like that, I think that the end result is more people playing altogether. Like, I don't see how that wouldn't be. Um, it is, like, it's a pretty stout price point, right? It's 70 bucks for the starter. Uh, but, yeah. yeah, I could, I mean, if you sell enough or you put enough on store shelves and, like, they sit there for a while and then some kid, like, two years down the line, it's discounted to, like, 40 bucks and he gets it and takes it to his local game store and starts playing or just plays, you know, tabletop with his like friends or at home or whatever. I think it's a great idea. Um, and then as far as advertising it, yeah, I, I think advertising it would be a great idea too. Uh, that doesn't hurt anybody. That's, that's a pretty good idea all around. Yeah. I would definitely love it if this would also appear in like the Disney store or anything, you know, since it's very like Disney plus ish, you know, yeah. theme like that is the theme of the set. That would be really cool. Uh, however, uh, even with like Disney and Marvel properties and whatever else, those haven't been pushed crazy hard. Uh, so Hero Clicks properties that are Disney and Marvel still aren't pushed crazy hard at like Disneyland or wherever else that would do it. But hopefully, since this is very much a, a Disney Disney like thing as much as it's more so than just Marvel, I guess. Uh, I would like to hope that they push it more, or maybe they have, when they sell DVDs, a little slip-in. Like, buy some Hero Clicks, a little slip Disney Plus set with DVDs and stuff. Don't free know how big Disney they're into selling. Yeah, there you go. Free starter. Ooh, my gosh. Could you imagine the giveaway a free $70 starter with Disney subscription? I I'd, think that'd be expensive. I already got a Disney subscription, <laughs> and I'd buy it. That'd be great. Yeah, buy it then, anyways i don't know what i'm lying about myself just, here everyone who has a disney plus subscription if it's they were to get starter. the starter uh i think the starters would be going up on like ebay or people just 
I don't know, probably just like shelve them or toss them or oh, like whatever. A lot of people, but I definitely. mean, if one percent of those people started playing, that'd be a whole heck of a lot of people. That would be that would be pretty incredible, actually. Like, especially since, yeah, like you said, it's a lot of people. Way more people have Disney Plus than play Hero Clicks. So even if one percent play started playing, that'd be incredible, and I would love it. I would love it. Um, but yeah, I think it kind of answers your question there, Bill. Uh, over on Facebook, Malcolm Rush sent us some questions. Uh, sent us thirty questions, Malcolm. You sent us thirty questions <laughs> about what really boils down to. Uh, even though you say. Uh, family members in Heroclix form. It really just sort of comes down to comic book characters, honestly, more so than anything else. So I kind of tried to like look at your questions and be like, what is a way we can turn these yeah. into we more still, Heroclix? We, we added some yeast to be fermented this question uh, yeah. into a nice prison wine. We really thought about why why prison wine? Why? why? I, don't, I don't know. Uh, I don't have a okay. uh, I have sure. a bathtub, but no still, so... <sighs> What else can we make? I guess mead. I still for mead. Don't know. Uh, mm. <laughs> okay. Uh, so basically, what this is gonna uh, come down to here is uh, we're gonna do a team, a team that's a family. Aw, how cute is that? So one team that's like a family. We're gonna build a family oriented team, and then we're gonna do what friend or family we would like to. What friend or family member would we like? to get into the game of hero clicks and then we're going to choose a, a trait or a hero clicks ability that revolves around a couple or a family or something like that, that we like, uh, that we enjoy. And yeah. So Simeon, what is, uh, what kind of team you got for, I built a 300 point team. That's a pseudo family oriented team. Uh, it would basically, it would at least fit the family is everything type format, I guess, with at least two related characters on the team and then characters that are uh, have something in relation to the two related characters. So that's my team. Simeon, what, what kind of team did you build with a family oriented aspect, I suppose? I built a highly dysfunctional team. Oh, okay. So, or highly Love dysfunctional to family team. In the, in the true spirit uh, of Thanksgiving. Also, I mean, the team itself is also pretty dysfunctional. As in that it does not quite function, but um, yeah. So I'll I'll just get into it. So the premise of the team, uh, being a Wolverine fan, uh, we have very few, well, almost none, family of Wolverines. Mm. Um, so the premise of the team, you can take pretty much any Wolverine that you want for this. Um, I specifically went with the 120 point uh, Regenesis Wolverine, uh, the X Men Regenesis. The that's the double stop click heals when he clears action tokens, that kind of thing. Wolverine. Uh, I then went with the all new Wolverine, which, as you may know, is the clone, uh, partially clone mm. DNA of Wolverine. So pseudo daughterish, daughterish. Yeah, daughter ish. Yeah, I don't. I don't really Not know uh, how, but I, I went with the all new one, which is from the X Men Xavier School. Spits out the little Jonathan, so that you even get the pet in oh, there. Yeah. Uh, then I had to go with the uh, the son that was left behind, I guess, Dakin, which is I think Wolverine's only living progeny in comics because he killed a whole heck of a lot of his kids. Um, but what a good think, dad! Yeah. Well, he didn't know they were his kids, to be fair. Oh. Yeah. To him, okay. they were just random people trying to kill him. And he was like, ah, I'll kill him. And then he was like, oh, no, they're my kids. Oh, I'm so conflicted. What a, yeah, what a How, <laughs> What a depressing comic storyline to make. It was. Very, it ends very with cool. Wolverine just throwing himself off this cliff over and over oh. again. So oh. that he has, like, a few moments of peace while his brain is, like, restitching itself together. And then once he, like... Is fully okay he, like climbs up the cliff to do it all over again it's pretty sad uh has kind of a happy like an uplifting like end though where it does like these one shots of all these heroes that he's worked with over the years that like say what they like about wolverine it's very campy but puck's like he smells bad it's like thank you puck um and then to finish off the team so i'm shooting for about a 400 point team uh, oh, okay. to finish off the team we're going with Guardian from the uh, 
dang, what is that Invincible Iron Man set? So Guardian is not only a member of Alpha Flight, which th that specific Wolverine from Regenesis doesn't have the Alpha Flight keyword. If you pick a Wolverine with the Alpha Flight keyword, X-23 can then copy it because she shares a keyword with Wolverine. And then if you go that route, you do get to use um, Guardian's special ability, which is when your force includes two or more characters with the Alpha Flight keyword, modify their attack values plus one, and then Guardian can use the carry ability to carry two characters with the Alpha Flight keyword. Uh, but Guardian is 100 points, and real name James Hudson. Now you might wonder, how is James Hudson related to Wolverine? Well, Wolverine's mother's maiden name is actually Hudson. So it's Hudson oh. Cowlet. So Wolverine's mom from the, uh, what is that, uh, Origins, Wolverine Origins comic line, um, not a lot known about her. But apparently like the great, great aunt of James Hudson of the Alpha Flight fame. So distantly related. Very strange, but... Uh, you got to reuse characters somehow, so there's only a finite number of names that you can have in comics. True. But yeah, quite dysfunctional, so they, they didn't get along as teammates. Uh, I don't even know, I've never seen an interaction in comics where they are aware that they're related. I'm sure that it's out there, I just don't read a ton of Alpha Flight, so uh, yeah, I think that's as dysfunctional as I could get. Uh, love it. I mean, I think when it comes to families, the X-Men are probably the most dysfunctional type of characters you can build a family off of. Yeah, uh, especially the you know, Whether it's a, a Summers, yeah, I was about to say. Um, I went a different route. Uh, so, uh, first member of my team from the WWE starter set is 107. This is the uh, mixed match one. Uh, uh, Charlotte Flair uh, <laughs> is uh, on the team. Uh, next up from the WWE main set, we have uh, her father, uh, Ric Flair. You know, uh, for those of you unfamiliar, uh, Richard Morgan uh, Flair here, uh, of course. So, you got those two. And then Charlotte's tag team partner for the Mixed Match Challenge, we have AJ Styles from that same starter set. So they can work together. Uh, and that, that leaves us about 70 points shy of a 300-point team. So you can't have Ric Flair without really a, a prodigy of his. You could even say a, a son, almost. Uh, but that would be Triple H from the starter set here. So we got starter set Triple H to round out a 300-point team. If we wanted to play a 400-point team, uh, the only other character uh, who I think could fit in, maybe this just shows how much I don't know, obviously we could slap Shawn Michaels in there. Uh, but he won't fill out like enough points, you know, to get us to 400. So I was like, ah, eh, I'm not going to do that. Our, our evolution, like, sub theme, basically, uh, going in this like main team, anyways, just it doesn't quite, it didn't quite fit our Generation X sub theme, really. Uh, so instead, we have Andre the Giant because him and Ric Flair are the only characters in WWE that also have the Heenan family keyword. Uh, not, of course, actual family. Uh, just represented by, you know, Bobby the Brain Heenan and everything. So then the WB ring for five points for 395 if you wanted to make it 400. Uh, sadly, Andre would have to be at his 90-point line, which is much worse than his 110. Not that his 110 is... Eh, he's got the 19, then it's a 17 defense, basically, is what sucks about it. So, uh, yeah, that would be my my family team. Simeon, who, who was a, a loved one or a family member or a friend? that you would want to uh to try out the game of hero clicks you would like to get into the game of hero clicks you know it's real bold of you to assume that i have friends okay on the, on the first thing but uh Fair no enough. i'd really like to get my nephew into hero clicks at some point um so he's pretty big into the minecraft game i don't know if you've heard of it it's uh, a small little that. indie game uh it's been around for uh, i think a couple months now um but yeah, yeah he's, he's pretty into that, likes doing that kind of stuff. Um, and then recently him and his dad have been playing like Pokemon and collecting cards. But I'd like to get him into like a real game that actual people play. Uh, Hero Clicks being what I'm talking about, you know. Uh, uh, yeah, I don't, of course. <laughs> I don't think anyone actually plays Pokemon anymore. I think that it actually, you know, I think that whole fandom's just kind of gone. 
Uh, I think that yeah. was a like 90s thing, but uh, yeah, Hero Place definitely. is forever. So, yeah. <laughs> Uh, no, I think he's Put he's about the right age. Shirt. Hero clicks is forever. <laughs> Hero clicks is forever. Pokemon is temporary. Hero clicks is forever. <laughs> um, no, uh, yeah, I, I think he's about the right Beautiful. age where he could grasp it and it could hold his attention long enough. So, uh, okay. I think at some point I'll start teaching him. See if he's interested. Okay, awesome. Uh, for me, uh, family member, I would really like to get into the game. Uh, is and I I've taken her to two tournaments so far, but I would really like to get my sister like like totally like in like playing the game, whatever. Because she she like enjoys it, she likes it. She really doesn't know how to like totally play. And we haven't really had a lot of time to like try to like teach her like totally how to play. Uh, just kind of been throwing her into three hundred modern tournaments, the full point Nimrod, uh, and seeing how she does. Now, if that was full point Unimind, she might she could probably could have okay. won that tournament. You know, <laughs> I mean, not knowing how to play. Probably could have just been like, all right, here's full uni. Uh, have fun. Perplex your defense. <laughs> Pick stealth. And then, uh, Pick stealth, yeah. Uh, but, yeah, no, I definitely think she really enjoys the game of Hero Clicks, and she likes it a lot. So She even I likes want part of our podcast. Yeah, she she listens to... I know a few people that will just listen to the opening, uh, the What Made Us Happy. So, I mean, she, and then she even yeah. specifically likes the, uh, the intro. She really likes the intro audio that you made, Simeon. Oh, she not the previous of that. <laughs> intro. <laughs> no, no. Not I don't think style? anyone. Wow. No one liked money. Style. Style, everybody. It's, it's style. Uh, it's style. <laughs> okay? It's style. It's strange how so many people mishear it the same way, though. It really yeah. is. What does it say about the society we live in? I mean, really. We um, do live in one. We kind of do be living in a society. Uh, but all right. Uh, and then the last question here. Uh, what is a character that has a trait that is like a family or a relationship couple or ability that works off of another character that you particularly like you know you can name both the figures or like whatever um but yeah oh one that i like Um, or you can just play whatever so this isn't really it's not really doesn't quite fit but it kind of does because there's a lot of like intertwining family members in there i really like the wakanda teams because there's a ton of stat boosting for the keyword and so if you're playing a wakanda keyword like theme team and you're playing like a zuri um you get bonuses when you're like in certain areas of the map when you play uh the chair panther you get a plus one attack across the board um when you play like shuri you get certain things you can play storm and get like stealth uh it's just like a very it's not necessarily like the strongest like family tie throughout like i mean some of them are direct family but it is a very thematic and very synergistic team because of all the all the number boosts and all like the special powers that are handed out and stuff it's just a really good combo of figures okay yeah no i think wakanda I mean, you can play basically an entire family, right? You got Azuri, you got, you know, T'Challa, T'Chaka, you have uh, Sh- Shuri, Shuri, whatever. Yeah. And yeah, yeah, you pretty much play like, I don't know if we have the queen, I forget her name. Uh, um, So Shuri, yeah, became uh, like the Wakanda leader at one point. So we do have quote unquote Queen Shuri. Um, I don't know if... <sighs> I don't know if we've ever gotten like know. the uh what would you call it the ancestral like of the what what is that word good what, like the Lord. big panther thing <laughs> yeah yep that. that bost is that what he is bost, bost? Yeah. bost? yeah no we haven't panther gotten anything dude. like that but i uh, mean uh cool. we do have a few storms to choose from she at one point was like queen of wakanda oh that's true um, yeah Satan. Married to Black Panther, I believe, yeah. Yeah, at one point, at least. Uh, and then, I mean, there's probably... You could make an argument for, like, Brotherhood with, like, Wakabi and stuff oh, like sure. that. So it's not... I don't know if Killmonger's anywhere actually related. In the movie, he was, but... Yeah. It was, like, distant cousin or something. Yeah, he has cousins, yeah. Uh, for my pick... Uh, I chose uh, Star Sapphire's Guy Gardner and then Streets of Gotham Ice, which just reminds me how long it's been since we've gotten an ice 
it's been since Streets of Gotham, and man, is she bad. She's a, she's 64 points uh, with a 9 attack, running shot, double bolt, incapacitate, barrier, 2 damage, uh, top dial. But she has a trait, which is unlikely couple, when she's adjacent to a friendly character named Guy Gardner. Uh, Ice and him both modify their attack values, plus 1, if not already modified by this effect. And then the Star Sapphire, Guy Gardner from War of Light, who is okay, I guess, for 103 points. Definitely not good. Um... He has Starcross Duo. When a friendly character named Ice is adjacent to Guy Gardner, they both modify their defense value by plus one, not already modified by his effect. So it'll let them both be 18's top dial, and it'll let Guy be an 11, and she'll be a 10 attack, which is pretty nice. And then, of course, Guy can carry Ice, and they can both running shot to about the same-ish areas they need to. Uh, Guy has one more speed up on her, so he can go five instead of four, and then he has two more range on her. But still, they... they relatively work pretty well together as a couple with their boost to attack and defense, of course. But yeah, uh, that was really the traits I chose. So thank you, Malcolm, uh, for all the questions. We do appreciate it. Uh, and then we have one more question here on Facebook uh, from Crow, Crow Tally here. He says, who would be your Ghostbusters team? Now, I haven't seen Ghostbusters Afterlife simian i don't yeah. know if you have i've only no uh, i've seen the animated series and the original two movies uh um, okay i haven't seen so you've seen more than i have i've seen yeah. the original two and that is it so you could go about this two different ways so on the surface like if you're trying to copy kind of like the ghostbusters thing um you've got like the scientist uh you need like your venkman you need like if you're trying to duplicate like the kind of characters you could go that route I was just thinking more along the lines of if you were to if you needed a team to fight off ghosts. And so I was more thinking just like a Midnight Suns team. So sure. my perfect like Midnight Suns kind of thing would be like a Doctor Strange man thing. Uh or not did I say man thing? Is that swamp thing? No. Yeah, swamp it is man thing. thing. Man thing's the Marvel. It is Man thing. Goodness yeah. gracious. Yes, it is Man yeah. thing. It's been so long since we've had one clicked uh, also in yeah. AEW. Um but yeah, it would be like, you know, Ghost Rider. It'd be, you know, my Midnight Suns kind of crew uh or like Defenders kind of crew. And then same thing on like DC side, it would just be like Justice League Dark with Constantine and Swamp Thing and like Orchid, all those great pieces that haven't also be, been made since who knows when. Right. Yeah, uh, Orchid. I don't know. Is that has, was that has that ever been made? Am I missing? Orchid, am I, I missing something? I think so. Yeah, Black an Orchid. actual character. Black Orchard. Oh, is it Orchid or is it Orchard? It's Orchid. I always okay. Well, because I guess flower, he's not right. I guess he's it's not a flower. bunch of trees, so that makes sense. <laughs> uh, don't know what I was thinking, but that's that's what it was. Uh, all right. Uh, I guess if I had to choose characters, I'm sort of trying to like put together a team right now. It's not much of a team. So we're just going to go ahead and go with what we got. Uh, so I'm going to say Punisher the Strange. These, these fit no specific roles at all. They're just cool guys that like punch ghosts or yeah, monsters, cool. really. I guess, yeah, Punisher the Strange. He's pretty cool. Uh, characters the monster keyword and adjacent opposing characters can't be healed. Like That's just like a pretty ball-in trait. Um, he's got his double uh, clear magic. Astral I guess it's not double. Or... His, his astral like Uzi there, which is pretty yeah. dope. Uh, I'm gonna say Dark Britain. Uh, Brian Braddock here. He's got a Slay the Pretender. He's got another trait that's like called Die Witch Breed. So we got we got witches and Jeez. vampires covered, um, <laughs> which I quite British like. It is a, a British. Or is that? Yeah, I'm gonna play him on a Tuesday. Oh, one of them. I got a bottle of water. Uh, anyway, we certainly uh, never did anything bad to witches here in America. That's what I definitely was not. Say. Definitely nope. not. No, no why would history we? books? Nope. Uh, I got Blade. Blade is also on the team, so we're kind of doubling up on the vampire thing, I guess. Uh, and then last night, last one is uh, is Shining Knight. I don't know why he's here. He's cool though, and Dark Britain was also a knight. He's got a Scalibur. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he's pretty cool, and he had mystical keyword. So. Uh, yeah, if you play this team, uh, it comes out to either 340 points or 230 points. So, it's I mean, it's not really a team. Uh, but if it comes out to 230, you know who else you can throw on that team, Simeon? Triple H? He, uh, no, you can put uh, Finn Balor on that team. 
put oh, old Finn Balor go. on there, even though he's a demon, but he'll he'll take away that that defense. Uh, and he's a ge- he's a demon that can do good. Slay beasts, you know. Yeah, uh, yeah. Old Finn Balor. All right, that is that is my Ghostbuster team. Even though that would be five figures, that eh, whatever. Anyways, yeah. If we just say one of them is like the lady that answers the phone, then that's perfect. Or yeah. one or the, is Rick Moranis's character. Oh yeah, the, yeah sure. Yeah, the car. Blades the car. Right? Car's a character. Know. Ecto one, yeah, he sells merch. Oh, they're Slimer. Um, Slimer's a character. Oh, Slimer, sure, yeah. yeah I mean, he's a fifth man. Sure. Put a ghost on my Ghostbusters team. Yeah, doesn't sound right. Uh, all right, I think that is all we have for the show. So, guys, if you want to support Dial H for Heroes, if you enjoyed listening to this nonsensical nonsense, uh, then please consider uh, leaving us a review on iTunes, uh, Apple iTunes, Podbean, Spotify, wherever you're listening to this. The reviews really super help us out. Uh, honestly, I I will give it. If you've never left the podcast a review, uh, the first three people that leave us a five star review, so you'd ha- you'll have to use your real name to in order to do this. We'll I, I will send you. Dollars. Nope, definitely not that. Uh, oh. Definitely not not that. But the first three people to leave us a five star review, uh, I will if I contact me, get a hold of me, uh, I will send you some Dial H action tokens, totally free of charge. Uh, some really cool Dial H action tokens. How's that sound? Sounds cool. Sounds cool. All right. Um, yeah. So leave us a review on iTunes, Podbean, Spotify, wherever. Uh, subscribe to us on YouTube. We're at seven hundred and sixty subscribers. I would really like to hit eight uh, eight hundred here soon. Uh, I think we make some really, really great content, and we have a ton of really cool content coming up. Uh, we've been uploading our generic bracket series where we're having all the generics from Wonder Woman fight each other to figure out which one is the best, which I think is really, really cool, and it's a really fun series. So if you want to, go ahead and check that out on YouTube. They, yeah, we just have episode one and two up so far for the generic bracket, and that's really cool. So check those out. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, all that good stuff, guys. And if you ever want to send us questions like Malcolm and Crow did and like Bill did, uh, if you join our Patreon, you can join our Discord and also get more action tokens and stickers and all sorts of cool Dial H merch, as well as be entered in for monthly giveaways. Uh, So definitely consider joining our Patreon and supporting us to let us do all sorts of cool stuff that we do on YouTube and on the podcast. And then if you want to send us questions, like I said, you can like us on Twitter or follow us on Twitter, like us on Facebook and send us questions uh, through those avenues. So I'm looking on coolstuffinc.com for no particular reason. I wasn't trying to find a good segue. But uh, even though it's out of stock, there's a Ghostbusters X or <laughs> Ghostbusters Men in Black oh. combo game called Ecto Terrestrial Invasion. So it's like the ghosts of aliens or just ghosts and aliens. Uh, but yeah, it looks like Agent K and Agent J teamed up with the ghostbusters to uh oh, that's cool yeah it's a very interesting looking box <laughs> and if you want a really interesting looking box i'm sure cool stuff inc has at least one uh you can you can get stuff there like cool stuff like uh i don't know maybe the the latest of hero clicks singles and sealed products you still have time to put in your order for uh this empire set that's coming out so you should check them out at coolstuffinc.com And like always, happy trails. So if you're looking for emotional satisfaction, my advice to you is seek professional hero clicks. No. Are you serious? Again? How many people even play this game? Like the hundred? Instant deadpan humor. Over six six people think I am funny. It's a hard day's work. Not that you know anything about that. Which Absolute fools, it's not witcher nonsense. I'm gonna make hero clips like that forever. Are you <laughs> kidding me? Hey, Google, attack someone. Let's attack Simeon because he's a jerk. Happy trails.